Welcome to the Rocky Marciano Archives. Thanks for visiting. I hope you get to find interesting things in the following. Remember, keep your hands high, shin low, and keep punching. And I hope you can just just bring Rocky out. Bring Rocky out to be who he is. Just who he really was. And if you can do that, then I will be happy. Research. That's where the joy lies. And the fascination. Let the others scurry about gathering their contemporary bits of gossip. This is where the meat is found. Welcome to the Rocky Marciano Archives. The channel has been quiet for a little while, as researcher and author John Cameron looks at making the channel better by creating deeper content to help us all get to know Rocky a little better, whilst continuing to piece together the definitive multi-volume biography on the legendary champion, which John admits is taking far longer than anticipated due to the amount of material that has found its way into the archives. The hopefully improved content that is coming is intended as a bridge to the biographical project. It will not follow a linear path, but will be created as he digs through his research material in the process of putting it all down on paper. Whilst we patiently wait for the latest content, however, sit back and listen to this excerpt from one of the many chats John had with Rocky's youngest brother, Peter. This from November 2023. Hey, John, how you doing? Right, I, I want to, again, Peter, I want to say thank you very much for taking a bit of your precious time to, to talk with, to me today. As I say, we... John, I, uh, I enjoy doing it, and I want you to get I want you to get as many facts accurate as you can because uh, anything that's written about my brother, um, I, I want to be accurate. Sometimes, um, as you know, when things are passed down from generation to generation, um, oftentimes, not oftentimes, I would say a majority of the time. Um, Things are not as accurate as you would like them to be. And uh, I'm not ashamed of anything my brother has done. And in lieu of getting information from, you know, a lot of other people who claim that they knew Rocky Marciano, um, there really aren't too many people left around that, that truly knew him. Absolutely, that's why I'm so grateful to your good self. For, uh, you can't get more first hand than his actual brother, so I, I'm hugely yeah from the brothers. Right. Exactly, I'm yeah. hugely grateful. As you know, we've spent quite a bit of time chatting about your brother's early life and through his boxing career. I was hoping today, if possible, we could speak a little bit maybe about his retirement years. I don't know if you spent much time with him during his retirement, but anything you can yes, recall. I've given that some thought. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, I've got some things that I think you might be interested in hearing. Uh, in order to answer that question, um, is it okay if I go ahead? Or? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, um, and, and to, uh, in order to answer that question, um, there's something I must say prior to doing that. Um, my brother, as, as you know uh, from previous interviews with whoever, uh, was a was a typical red-blooded American young man. Uh, grew up in in those times. Was a product of the Depression, as you know. And um, he picked up some some uh, I, I want to call them habits, but just traits of the way things were during those times. And he. Um, he was not an angel. He, uh, I don't know if there are many angels in this world, but he was, uh, he was always, he always loved his family, very loyal to his friends. And what happened with him, it's something I can't even answer, but the way it goes is uh, something happened to him in his life. Um, you may or may not know that 
um, in his 18 to 22, um, he, he would he smoked. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he smoked cigarettes. Yeah. Um, when he went in the service, he was smoking cigarettes. Um, and then something must have snapped in his mind. I don't know if it was a uh, bolt of lightning. I don't know if he had met someone. He grew up in the family, uh, Roman Catholic, but he was never a church goer. Um, I don't know how much you know about the Catholic religion, but we have sacraments, uh, different sacraments, and he received all of the confirmation, first communion, because those were things that your parents brought you to, and and he, he certainly had those sacraments. But sacraments like going to Mass, uh, he was not a churchgoer. Um, he didn't go to... Uh, he didn't really follow the Catholic religion the way the church would like you to do it. But somewhere along the way, John, something snapped in Rocky. And this pertains to the question you're asking about after his retiring years. Um, Rocky started boxing and he just dedicated his life, his body, and his mind mind into what he was doing and that was training and that was trying to do everything known to human beings whatever he had to do to get better to improve that's what he did he went to crazy ends doing things that were sometimes unimaginable example where he trained up at grossing up at Grossinger's. He, he had, a, in those days, now that you're talking about the late 50s and 60s, and the light bulbs, the light switches, were the string. You pull a string and the light goes on. Well, in his bedroom where he slept, he attached to the string a very tiny little ball, uh, maybe the size of a, a quarter inch ball bearing, uh, something very small, and he attached it to the end of that light switch, and before he would go to bed at night and sleep, he had in his mind, and I can't give you an exact count, but he would swing that thing, and he would have to hit it while it was swinging, and he made himself do it until he did it ten times in a row. A hundred times in a row, he did he did, did things uh, on on a more personal note. Um, and again, I'll go back to he was a red blooded, typical American Italian American young man, and he he loved women. But back in those years, it was ingrained in him once he started training that if you're going to indulge in, in boxing, if you're going to get involved in boxing, you can't have both things. And by being with a woman draws your strength. And this is what was taught to him. So for all intent and purposes, and I can't say he totally gave that stuff up, but he stayed away from it much more than had he not been in training. So he, 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 he conducted his personal life because he, he knew, he thought, and it was ingrained in him again, that this took away from you, from your strength, from all the things you want to get done. There were so many different little things that he did uh, to improve his, his ability as a boxer. So many things. When he was in the hangar up at the airport in Grossinger's, where he trained, and I was there so many times, that he'd get on the heavy bag, and by the way, he felt that the, the real heavy bag was the best training device that he had, because it, 
he felt it gave him stamina, it gave him strength, and this bag was not a typical heavy bag. This bag weighed two or three times as much as the normal traditional heavy bag. And they would time him and they would give him a two minute, a two minute uh, drill on it. And he would get up there and he would start banging. And let me tell you something, John, I try my best not to exaggerate anything. But when he hit that bag, you might think, you might think that well, something was outside just shaking the earth. That's how powerful. You can't imagine it. And I don't care how much you think you can. You cannot imagine the power, the strength in his punches. Let me put it this way. There was no human that could stand up to it. And I think he proved that. But, of course, like everything, it has to be a good solid punch. It couldn't be a glancing blow. So what he did was he did everything he could to become more accurate. And that little thing with a light strength. Accuracy. Accuracy and strength. And what this ultimately equated out and what this ultimately gave him was a feeling of invincibility. And he honestly believed, after doing, this is my take on it, this is what gave him, he knew how hard he worked and getting back to the heavy bag. After they blew the whistle for two minutes, he would go on for at least another 10, 15, 20, 25 seconds longer. And that might seem short to you. But on the heavy bag, that's a lifetime. And everything he did was geared towards one thing. And I don't have to keep repeating myself. For him to improve, to be the best he could be. So when he stepped into the ring to face his opponent, he was totally... 100% convinced that no one could beat him. No one. And that's the confidence that, that all of those things that I talked about and remarked about gave him. It gave him that feeling of invincibility that no human being can take two or three of my punches and knock me down. So you might be asking yourself, right now, where is this man leading? He told me this was going to lead to the questions about his retirement years. And again, this is a personal, we've had talks. Uh, we never went to the center, uh, the, the, the right to the center of it, but the fringe conversations that I've had with him uh, is the following. Uh, I oftentimes have remark that the way he trained would remind me of a monk. You go into you go into that monastery and all that you have on your mind is is pleasing Jesus Christ. And that's what Rocky did. But it wasn't to Jesus Christ. He was working hard and again to become the best. So here we go. He retires. And he starts thinking, you know, I've given up probably the finest years of my life. The finest years, you're healthy, you're strong. You also have to throw into the equation that during those years, 50s and 60s, baseball was the number one sport. Boxing was by far the second most important, biggest. So they knew Joe DiMaggio. And believe me when I tell you, there wasn't a person in this country, maybe maybe in, 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 in the free world, that never heard of Rocky Marciano because guess what he was? 
He was the heavyweight, not the middleweight, not the welterweight, lightweight. He was the heavyweight champion of the world. And he must have said to himself, you know what? I've given up the finest years of my life to get to this point. And now I'm retired. And you know what I'm going to do? Another thing I never mentioned about his diet, his foods. He grew up in an Italian household. He loved pasta. He loved meatballs and sausages and, and, and bread. He loved it. And he said, now he's retired. And he says, you know what? Excuse the expression, but F everything. F everybody. I am going to enjoy the years that I've missed. And he indulged. And he indulged in all the food that he wanted. He was never a big drinker. Never. Even when he was smoking. He never was a big drinker. But he always enjoyed a glass of red wine, which he gave up during his training days. So... He started drinking wine, and I'm sure you must know, because I know you're thorough, and you know that Rocky put on an awful lot of weight, mm -hmm. to a point where he looked in the mirror, he saw himself on TV, and he didn't like himself. And then he started, he started after about, oh, well, he retired in 1955, he was killed in 69 so you're talking 14 years and during the first five first six maybe he indulged and i don't want to go into all of the other indulgences you can use your imagination um but he did he did indulge and uh <laughs> and he and he maybe overindulged especially in the food part of things. But then one day, um, he looked in the TV monitor and he saw this real heavy guy starting to lose his hair. And he looked like, he didn't look like a heavyweight champion of the world. And that's when he came up with that saying, when you stop boxing, they stop calling you champ. If you like this content, then hit the subscribe button. To really support this channel, consider joining for just over a dollar a month and unlock ad-free members-only content. Every member becomes a research funder and will play a key part in revealing the real Rocky. I just enjoyed combat. I just enjoyed the sport that I had learned so well. And I had practiced so much that when the bell rang, I did a job. I could concentrate on the opponent. It was a great, great career for me. I'm proud and very happy to talk about it. Sometimes I, uh, I wonder why I was such an aggressive man in the ring.